I remember when uh, when Halo 2 came out, because uh, I, I, I never played, uh, you know, Donkey Kong or, you know, I had friends who played, you know, I just, it, I don't know what this was my thing. Uh, but when Halo 2 came out, I said to myself, you know, I really should play this game. I mean, it's kind of a big deal now. So I got an Xbox and a copy of the game and, and went home and I made a critical mistake of not involving some nearby 12 year old to teach me how to play this damn game. Because I could not get Master Chief out of the original room. I mean, all he just kept, you know, bumping into walls. And so that went on for about an hour and I thought, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> and I decided that in my particular case, I either had to be decent or not play at all. And I opted for not playing at all. So yeah, my, my attachment to Halo uh, while I have the utmost admiration for those of you who are, you know, gamers, uh, my attachment is and was always the story. And I loved from the moment uh, Marty O'Donnell laid out the story of Halo Combat Evolved to me, uh, it was right up my alley. And, and that's what attracted me to the game and that's what keeps me, uh, keeps me engaged in it. Um, but yeah, I suck at Halo. <laughs> <laughs> in an interview you said Halo 4 was your favorite. Halo 4 was uh, followed very closely by Halo Infinite. Uh, the reason is, first of all, I love the story. I remember when we finished uh, 3, and then of course Reach came out after that, and I had a very minimal involvement with that, but when Halo 3 was over, the, 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 I remember the attitude, the thinking was, we're, we're done. You know, this is the end of this trilogy, and uh, you know, ne never to be revisited again. And I remember feeling sad for a couple of reasons. Number one, there would be no more paychecks. Number two, um, I thought, wow, there's this story, the canon of, uh, of Halo is so rich. There's all this stuff that we're not gonna, all these stories that, that are left untold. And I remember thinking it was a shame. And so when I was contacted to read for Halo 4, which I actually had to audition for, but that's a whole other story. Uh, and then got a handle on what we, they were gonna do. I thought, oh, this is great. We're gonna get into some of this, the relationship between the Chief of Cortana and you know some of the other uh, uh, storylines that, that were sort of untapped. Plus the fact that it was the first time that Jen Taylor, the voice of Cortana, and I actually got to work together in the same room at the same time. In fact, Jen and I had never even met until about three or four months before we started recording uh, Halo 4. So that experience uh, is near and dear to my heart. And then with Halo Infinite, I thought, uh, for my money, it was really a complete game. I, I often would say uh, to people before Infinite came out that if you were a fan of Halo 3, and everybody's a fan of Halo 3, that if you like three, you would like Infinite. And I think, uh, and you, you can be the judge of that, but I thought there's so many of the, of the elements that made three great that, that are part of Infinite. And so, um, I, just as a, as a story and as, and as gameplay, um, I, I thought they really put it together on uh, Infinite. Is there any specific lines that stick out the most to you? Like, what's your favorite line? 
Uh, my favorite, uh, you know, people ask, I don't really have a favorite line, but the one that I suppose conjures up the most memories is when uh, at the end of Halo 4, uh, the chief is, oh, he, he, Alaski is talking to him and the chief is, in typical Master Chief fashion, is ignoring him. But he's really almost speaking to himself when he, when uh, Lasky talks about uh, uh, being a machine and the chief says, thinking to himself really about Cortana that, uh, you know, she said that to me once about being a machine. And I always liked that, that line. I thought it really, it, it exposes the emotion that, that Master Chief was beginning to feel. Uh, and in Infinite, I had a line, but I now I forget. Oh, I know what it is. Um, of course, in Infinite, we revisited a few lines. I need a weapon. Finish the fight. Both were revisited in Infinite, but the one that uh, that has caught on is um, oh my God, it's escaping now. Oh, missions change. They always do. <laughs> Glad I thought of it. <laughs> I'm gonna switch up the subject yeah. a little bit. How do you like your pizza? Do you like thin crust, can toss, deep dish? We're not gonna go pineapple, are we? Yeah. No, we're not going pineapple. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not even sure that pizza and pineapple should be in the same street, much Ooh. less on each other. <laughs> I know this is a source of this is a sore point with some. Are you a pineapple guy? I'm not a pineapple guy, but I do think it's okay to have pineapple. See, I don't think it's okay. I think people should be put in handcuffs who put pineapple on pizza. Or at least should be mentally, say something should be, it's not right. I like pineapple, and I like pizza. You know what? I like ketchup, and I like eggs. Don't put them together. That's all I'm saying. All right, so uh, this panel is about y'all, so if y'all have any questions, go ahead and line up over here. Yeah, we can get those questions answered. Crazy. Um, you, it's been so many years of Halo. Um, what was your best memory on set recording your life? My best memory, going back to four again. Now, you know, again, some I get asked this a lot. I'm a very talented stage actor, and uh, does a lot of work in this Seattle area. And I really learned a lot from her in terms of uh, uh, you know how to approach uh, Master Chief because it, it was. What made that those particular sessions different were I had to try, and I and I emphasize the word try, to expose the chief's emotions because he was very he you know that was sort of bred out of him you know. In fact, if you watch the Halo TV show, they talk about you know a chip that basically is you know kills the emotion button. <laughs> In Spartans, and uh, so you're, you know he's, you know you're 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 struggling with a character who is having emotional feelings and doesn't know how to deal with it and doesn't know how to express it, and he's about ready to lose the only entity, the only sentient being that ever really was close to him, which is Cortana, and Cortana's going through rampancy, and, and you know she's starting to fade away, literally. And uh, and uh, the chief no likey, <laughs> so he's having a difficult time processing that. And so, as an actor, uh, that was a challenge for me to try to, you know, it's like Master Chief's not going to break down and cry. That's not going to happen. But he felt like it, and uh, so it's you know emotion holding back emotion, that kind of thing. And that was the. Uh, that was the challenge and also the fun of, of being able to uh, to uh, do those uh, scenes. Woo! So my question is, what is your top like Master Chief moment, like the entire scene? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, you know, it, it's a hard question. You know, it, my, my favorite thing about this whole 20, going on 23 year experience for me, uh, has been when we actually go into the session for the first day of recording a new game. 
you know, meeting with the writers, meeting with the director, going in, doing, you know, a, a sort of an audio walkthrough of, of what we're going to do. Um, that, that Because the energy level, you, you just get pumped up, you know, it's like a, like a, you know, a, a sports guy before a game, you know, the, the, the adrenaline's going, you know, how are we going to approach this, you know, I get to put the armor back on in, 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 in a metaphorical sense. And uh, that's my favorite experience of the entire thing. But all of the things that have, have been an outgrowth of, of recording Master Chief, this being one of them, uh, has been, uh, in, you know, enlightening and fun. I've met a lot of interesting people and, and gotten a lot of really good feedback about, uh, you know, you all's experience with the game and the story that's been very informative to me. So all of those things have been been a lot of fun. Uh, well, if I'm to be perfectly honest, uh, I think uh, we got a little lost there. Um, uh, I, I, I think that, you know, I'm just going to leave it at that. I, I, just think, <laughs> I mean, you know, the, 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 the funny thing about, I remember when Halo 2 came out. And that was about the first time I started making appearances on behalf of Halo and Master Chief. And I remember a lot of people were upset with Halo 2, mainly because they didn't like the cliffhanger ending. You know, they, were, they wanted a more definitive, you know, resolve to the story. They were very upset about it. And then, you know, now it's one of the favorite games of the entire yeah. genre, right? Yeah. 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 After Halo 3, what I hear most is Halo 2 is when people talk about their favorite game. And the same with Halo 4. When Halo 4 came out, you know, there was a lot of negative response to it in regards to the gameplay. People liked the story, they didn't like the gameplay. Well now, you know, in the last year or so, and how old is Halo 4? That's, that's 20, what? 2010? 20, 20, yeah, okay. Now I'm starting to hear people like, yeah, yeah, no, I really like Halo 4. So maybe Halo 5 will come around to that. <laughs> but I don't think so. <laughs> but we had fun doing it. Uh, and, uh, you know, there was some, uh, you know, the most fun I had, do you remember the TV commercial? Yeah. When, when you know, Master Chief and, help um, me out. Spartan Lock. Spartan Lock. Spartan Lock. That I don't know if you remember the, 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 you know, first of all, the biggest kick of my life, when, when I was starting out in voiceover, my highest aspiration was to be the guy who did the movie, to the, the voiceovers for the movie trailers in a world. You know, that guy. Uh, Gala Fontaine is his name. He passed away a few years ago. But he did all the voiceover commercial, all the voiceover for, for movie trailers, in the, you know, the stuff you saw before the feature came on. I, he was my idol, and that's the guy I wanted to be. So, this the commercial for Guardians uh, ran. We we went to me and my stepson went to see Star Wars, whatever the latest Star Wars would have been. I guess that would have been. Um, Force Awakens. Episode seven. Say again. Force Awakens. I guess it would have been the Force Awakens. Yeah, when that moved, yeah, and and they played the Halo commercial before the movie. And so that was as close as I ever got to having my voice in a movie trailer. And I was thrilled, right? sidebar. Uh, but if you remember that commercial, there were two different versions. One where Spartan Lock is about ready to end Master Chief, and then the exact same commercial in reverse, where the Chief is ready. Well, and this is what pissed people off, that story never existed in the game. That, that situation never happened in the game and people felt rightly so misled um, you, you know it's like seeing a uh, you know a piece of a movie in a movie trailer and then you find out that piece is not actually in the movie <laughs> so, anyway. but, but I, the, the reason i bring that up is because even though it was never in the game it was one of my favorite scenes to do we had a lot of fun with that yeah is it really wow I guess so, yeah, a year and a half. How do you guys think most of y'all played in my house, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah.
Yeah.
Hope that answers it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Am I mad? <laughs> I'm not mad. I understand. Uh, you, you know, the, you know what I knew that it was finally going to happen because there've been been fits and starts with a with a, a live action uh, Halo going back to God, I don't know, ten years ago uh, at least. And um, but I knew first of all there was no way if they were going to do a live action and reveal. <laughs> him the way they've done there was no way it was going to be me i'm not seven foot five <laughs> and weigh 375 pounds with no body fat it's the no body fat part it doesn't work for me and makeup can only do so much <laughs> so once it became uh, and i thought you know there's two ways the story could go one is sort of like a mandalorian where you rarely see the main character um, and that's one direction and had it gone that direction then you know of course I, I would have been the logical choice uh, but once they made the decision and they made it rather dramatically and very early in the first episode that you know Pablo was going to be the, the, the literally the face of Master Chief then that wasn't going to be me so um, you know people ask me how I feel about the, the, uh, the series and my feeling as I look at it completely separate from what my experience has been in Halo. Uh, and even they will tell you, it's a different story. They call it the Silver Timeline. So it's a, it's a, diff, it's a reimagining of the Halo story. If you look at it like you always want it to be like the game, um, then it's not gonna be satisfying. It, but in, and the way I look at it is, you know, I'm a lover of science fiction, and it's a science fiction tale. And I, I really try to view it in that in that regard. And to me, also the fact that Jen Taylor is still Cortana keeps me hanging on. You know, <laughs> so I, I, and I'm anxious to see. I'll see Jen next week, actually, and uh, uh, she's been over in uh, in Budapest uh, uh, shooting the new series, season two. So I'll try to get the inside scoop and not tell any of you. <laughs> Better, yeah, I, I, I think it was, um, you know, the, the, the two-dimensional aspect of Master Chief, which was really what the Bungie story was all about, it sort of been played out. And if, if, if they didn't go and expand his character a little bit, I, I just think it would have been like, okay, you know, been there, done that. I mean, how many times can you watch Master Chief go, Cortana. <laughs> so basically, if I got paid by, by every time I said Cortana in the first three games, I own an island in the Caribbean somewhere. You know? But uh, so yes, I'm very happy that it that it went into you know a more human and, and to me a more interesting uh, exploration of character. Right, right. You got enough for like eight more questions. Well, I'm just here to put through a little advice. Uh, I'm a little young, and I got like a lot of anxiety. I'm just wondering how you had like how you have the strength to keep moving forward with your daughter. Well, look, I've I've been blessed beyond measure. Uh, you know, to fall into this thing, which I, I literally did. You know, I've been a I was a radio disc jockey for forty some years, and uh, and then while I was doing that, I became interested in doing. Primarily commercial voiceover, and and I, I was really when I lived in Los Angeles, and, you know, got an agent started to do you know uh, commercials. That that was a lot of fun. It was a different gig every day. You know, the radio thing was starting to get a little bit redundant, and and uh, uh, commercial voiceover w was a lot of fun. And then doing some narration, I did a series that ran on uh, Shark Week on the Discovery Channel called Shark Attack Files. I ran for a few years. That was a lot of fun because you know who doesn't like sharks, right? <laughs> and uh, and um, when the Halo thing came along, of course, nobody had any idea that this was going to become what it's become. When I did it back into, I think the first sessions might have been in 2000, early 2001. Um, 
well, there was no thought that this was going to be something I'd be doing 23 years later. Uh, the fact that it's turned out that way has been incredibly exciting, but I'm a very lucky guy. Uh, and um, it, it, I, I, I still love doing it. And my advice to people always about whatever you decide to do or whatever you are doing career-wise is do what you love. We're not all that lucky to be able to, to do that. But I think that should be an aspiration, is to do what you love. Because if you do, good things will come around that. And I've been blessed enough that, that you know, that's been, you know, like, I mean, this was like ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, I, I never thought, you know, when I'd be going to conventions and, you know, meeting all you folks are doing this, you know, year after year after year. So, uh, you know, that was sort of a, a, a benefit that I never even dreamed of. But here we are. Hello. Hello, Sam. And uh, before I ask my question, I want you to let you know that uh, honestly, when I was like 10 years old, I know the games are rated and mature, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't tell you how many. I started playing your game when I was five, and I'm like, <laughs> Mom, Dad. Where are you? <laughs> I I dominate between my neighborhood uh, friends that I had there. We were on the couch set up playing uh, co-op uh, multiplayer. And once I got uh, Xbox Live Halo 3, I don't know, like two years in, I, I was first place every match. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, and was, I like to say that. Uh, like your games have uh, advanced and your voice sounds have, have changed, like you said. Uh, there's more emotion to, your, to the character. And uh, in Halo Infinite, uh, well, it really changes the so loss of Cortana. And like how it was mentioned before, you're, you're trying to be a father figure, you're trying to be, you know, just more supportive. Yeah. And uh, when you were talking about the uh, that specific scene with, uh, well, they call him Rohammer as well. <laughs> and uh, talks about that he fell as well. Yeah, yeah. And that, that exactly right there is showing us that he still has a future in, in, in himself. Right. And well, he's, you know, and really the, the, the credit really goes to, 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 you know, to the writers. The writers are, and I've been blessed to be able to work with some some really, some really good writers. And the director, a guy uh, in, in Halo Infinite, uh, who, who was also involved in the writing, Paul Crocker, just, he had a deep understanding of who Master Chief was, and it really benefited me to, to be able to share that with somebody. And I think it comes out of the performance. In Halo 4, when I, okay, this is the question. <laughs> Halo 4, legendary enemy. Is that you that they show? Uh, no, uh, no. I, I don't even know if it's a real person. Uh, if that may be, you, you mean when they just show the eyes? Yeah, it was not me. And uh, I, I'm, again, I'm not sure if it was an actual human being or if it was an animation. I, I should have asked somebody a long time ago <laughs> about that, but I didn't. Yes, sir. All right. I have one thing to ask. Can you please say, I hate pineapple pizza and master voice? I hate pineapple pizza. Woo! I don't want to say that. On, I've been on the record on that. I also hate anchovies, but that's my problem. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, who has been your favorite antagonist from the series? My favorite antagonist from, from the series? Uh, without question, the Arbiter. Uh, he's not only my favorite antagonist, uh, Keith David is my favorite voice actor, and uh, to be able to share a game Woo! with a man, yeah, absolutely. Uh, great guy, uh, great talent, and uh, it was such an honor. I, I've only met him once. We did a um, convention together in Atlanta many years ago, and he's the nicest guy in the world, and we were on a panel like this, and I was the fanboy in that. I was like, oh my God, that's Keith David! But he's a great guy and a great talent. Not only a great voice actor, he's a great uh, uh, actor. 
and uh, I really enjoyed working with him. And I think the Arbiter uh, was a really, again, a character who started out as his antagonist and ended up being his ally. And, uh, you know, I, I don't, although I have no inside information on this whatsoever, I find it hard to believe that we've heard the last of the Arbiter. So, we'll see what happens. I might not be the first one to ask you this, but uh, Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing at McDonald's? <laughs> Sir, finishing this Big Mac. <laughs> Hello, Chief. Uh, I brought this question from the official Halo Discord. They want to know, uh, regarding stuff like the little voiceovers you just did, What's the weirdest like request for a voiceover as the voice of Chief that you've ever received? Hmm. Well, I had one today that I, I couldn't, and I won't repeat it, but somebody came up and wanted me to make a voice recording at the table and uh, decided not to do it. Uh, it, it. You know, I've been asked to officiate weddings. Uh, I've done more than my share of wedding proposal, marriage proposals, um, which, uh, you know, or, or birth announcements. I've done a few of those. I've done uh, just some gender reveals uh, all, all through uh, uh, Cameo mostly. Uh, but yeah, there's been a lot of that. Uh, but it's, you know, I mean, I, I talked to somebody here the other day who said they're, they, yeah, they're walked down, down the aisle uh, Wedding music was doo, 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 which I felt wow for your wedding, <laughs> but was the you know the original Halo theme. So uh, you know I, 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 I've had a lot of those, but I've never bothered to get an actual minister's license. So just to put it out of your mind, I can't officiate your wedding. <laughs> it would not be legal. Let's put it that way. Thank you. Do you ever feel weird being acknowledged out in the, the wild, if you will? In, in the, the wild. wild. <laughs> if you have, what is like your most memorable? Uh... You know, it, it usually doesn't, to be honest with you, it usually doesn't happen. Uh, I mean, as you can hear, you, you know, this is my normal speaking voice. And obviously there's a similarity between this and, you know, with how I talk for Master Chief. But I really register it down, you know, Master Chief is, uh, you know, he's, you know, I, I go to a lower register and also, you know, he's speaking into a microphone all the time. So the idea of Master Chief yelling when he has something like this in front of him inside the helmet all the time just doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, so, um, so I don't, it doesn't happen that often. Um, what was it? Oh, I was I was literally at a grocery store the other day, and the guy, the person who was checking me out, did. Oh no! This was in fact this just happened. I was going through security at the airport, and the TSA guy, you know, and you know how you're. It's always a little weird when you're going through TSA, even if you got nothing to hide and whatever. It's always still a kind of a you know weird experience, right? And I'm going through, and the guy stops me. And he goes, um, um, and I go, shit. What did I leave in my bag? What, oh God, this is, you know, a strip search, you know, what, <laughs> deep cavity, you know, what's going to happen? <laughs> and uh, he goes, um, are you in show business? Uh, well, he, yeah. Are you Master Chief? <laughs> so the TSA guy is geeking out. And he went, and now, you know, there's a line. People want to get on their plane. <laughs> and the TSA guy's geeking out over, uh, and that is, so the, you know, it happens a few times, but quite honestly, it's pretty rare. All right, last question. What about Batman? Are you saying no to Batman? Because I'm out of here if you're saying <laughs> I don't want to incur Batman's wrath. Go ahead. I got you down, you down here. I'm a collector, and I mean, there's literally dozens of us um, out there between trolley gummies and um, action figures, mm -hmm. uh, a GPU, which you signed for me kindly today. What's the strangest or your favorite product or tie in that you've seen out in the wild or that you've done? Uh, 
somebody brought me a thing, uh, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday, of a poster of like a master, it had to be, it was not real, at least I don't think it was, uh, of a Master Chief uh, cereal. <laughs> you know, that was like, Master Chief eats Rice Krispies. You know, or whatever it was, but it was, uh, I, I, I thought that was pretty weird. I've seen a few of those before. All right, Batman. In, in your voice, can you say, all the Slim and Shorties in the house say yeah. Say what? <laughs> all the Slim and Shorties in the house say yeah. All the Slim and Shorties. All the Slim and Shorties in the house say yeah. All the All the, the Slim and Shorties in the house say yeah. All the Slim and Shorties in the house say yeah. <laughs> Did I just offend somebody? Or... <laughs> no, 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 no. Am I okay, Clifton? Now, when we were talking before you came, you did not offend nobody, but you would make everybody's day if you said, Puro Biche 956. What does that mean? It means pure. And what does Pinche mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. We know. We know. We just... Oh, no. Say it. Okay. Say Puro 956. Puro 956. Why do I feel like I'm not getting in a shit ton of trouble right now? Why is that? All right. Keep it going for Steve Downs, y'all. Thank you, everybody. You guys have been great. Thank you very much. Uh, quick point. I'm going back to the table for one more, one, one more round. So if you didn't get something signed or... Whatever, we'll be back at the uh, the uh, signing table here for a short period of time. So, I had some more questions too. You know? Absolutely.